G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, a follow-up video on my review of the Copus 2 SE. And overall, I said this was a really, really nice quad. Lots of adrenaline, flies fast, ticks all the boxes. My only real concern with these arms and what appears to be fiberglass in the middle. Now, a lot of people have come back and said, no, no, it's not fiberglass. It's a, it's a carbon foam, white carbon foam. And I mean, I'm a bit of a cynic, a bit of skeptical sometimes because I've never seen white carbon. Carbon is black. Carbon is black. And even if this was carbon granules mixed with the white resin, there would still be flecks of black in there, right? Um, or it would be a, a quite a dark gray color if that was very, very fine. So I don't see how this is white carbon foam. I may be wrong. It, it happens all the time, but um, I'm still a little bit skeptical about that material. Now, other people said in the comments, but it doesn't matter if the center is, is only filled with foam because the strength comes from the skins on the outside and they are 100% right almost. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk a little bit today about strength and how composites get their strength. Why is it that carbon fiber is so damn strong? Well, let's talk about that. Let's see how that works. Excuse the crappy whiteboard. <laughs> we'll get a replacement shortly. Right. When we talk about strength, there, there are a number of different factors. I mean, there are different aspects to strength. And the three main ones are tension, compression, and shear. That's because there are different ways of bending stuff. There's different ways of applying force to a material to see how strong it is. Now, a good example is paper. I'm going to show you a piece of paper here. Paper is very much like carbon. Pretty much like carbon. Here we go. Now, if I try and pull on this paper, it's actually quite strong, right? I have to put a lot of force, a lot of tension on the paper. If I pull hard enough, it'll rip. But to all intents and purposes, this is quite strong under tension. But what happens if we apply pressure by pushing? Well, <laughs> it's really weak under compression. It just folds, it just bends, it buckles. So that's exactly like carbon fiber. And most of the other composites too, Kevlar and fiberglass, they are very strong under tension. It's really hard to snap them if you're pulling on them. But if you just push on them in their bare form without resin, they just crumple up. There's no strength at all in them under compression. So what we have to do, to, if we want to make something out of carbon fiber and make it strong, we have to make sure that the forces turn into tension somehow. So that if, if you try and bend it, somehow we're getting tension because it's really strong under tension. And the reason that we put epoxy or some kind of resin around these fibers is because the epoxy, the resins, are really strong under compression. They're exactly the opposite. A piece of epoxy, you can break it. with It's not particularly strong under tension, but it's really hard to crush. It's a bit like concrete. Now, concrete is very much the same. In fact, when we look at carbon fiber in our, our fiberglass and Kevlar composites, they are just like reinforced concrete. If, if you don't know, concrete is actually really strong under compression. It's like resin. You can really put a lot, you can carry a lot of weight directly pushing down onto it before it crumbles and cracks. But it's really weak under tension. If you have a, something made of concrete, it pulls apart quite easily because the bond between the individual grains is quite weak. So in a way, the concrete is just like our resin we use in our composites. Um, so how do you make it stronger? And how do we make it so that when there's a pulling force, when there's some tension, it doesn't just break? Because if I draw a little diagram, here's a, here's a thing. This is just a thing, right? Let's just say it's a, it's a thing like that. If I put a force on here and hold this end in a vise or something, it tries to bend. This thing tries to bend. And if you can look, you can see very clearly what's happening here. When something tries to bend, it tries to stretch the top. The top tries to become longer. So it goes under tension. There's a stretching force applied to the top of the, of the object. And there's a compressive force applied to the bottom. Because if we were to actually bend that like this, you'd see that this distance is shorter than that distance. We've had to stretch the top and or compress the bottom. So that means that the stuff at the top's under tension, stuff at the bottom's under compression. What we do with reinforced concrete is because under this situation, the concrete would just crack at the top and it would break really easily. We put reinforcing steel in it. Bars of, you know, rebar it's often called. Bars of reinforcing steel through the concrete. And what happens is that steel is also very strong under tension. So where the concrete would just snap because it was being pulled, the, the load is taken by the reinforcing steel. It stops the concrete from snapping. But steel itself is comparatively speaking weak under compression. You get a big piece of steel bar and you push it, it'll just buckle up. So the concrete provides the strength at the bottom and the steel provides the strength at the top. Same with fiberglass, Kevlar, carbon fiber composites. The carbon fiber is like the steel, it provides the strength under tension, and the resin that we put it into provides strength under compression. Just before I go, we're not going to talk about shear strength today, but I will talk about it in another video because it is also important. Right, let's take one of these Copus 2 arms and have a look at it. There we go, some carbon fiber on the top, carbon fiber on the bottom, and something, 
something white in the middle. Now, as I say in the comments, people have said it doesn't matter in there because it's the, it's the tensile tension that's being applied to the top and the resin on the bottom that will provide the strength. And as I said, that's true, but only to a point. Because if we look at the copus arms, they're at five millimeters thick. And just rough, ready reckoning, it looks like the top layer of carbon is 1.25 millimeters. The centerpiece here is 2.5 millimeters. And the bottom layer is 1.25 millimeters for a total thickness of five millimeters. So we only have one or two and a half millimeters of carbon there. The rest of it's just spacing. Now this white stuff will have some strength, of course, but it's not going to be as strong as carbon fiber because if it is a carbon foam, then it's not going to have fibers. A foam, you know, we won't have fibers in the foam. A foam typically is, is got bubbles in it, hasn't it? <laughs> and even if it's just granules of carbon embedded in resin, which again, I, I can't see why because it doesn't, it's white and there's no white carbon. So if it's just a spacer material, you know, the theory is it doesn't need to provide any strength because the strength is going to be provided by the skins. When we try and bend this arm, the carbon at the top we put under tension and it's extremely strong under tension. And at the bottom, the resin holding the carbon together will be put under compression and it's very strong under compression. So this will be stiff, right? And you might think, well, hey, great, fabulous. Five millimeter arms, strong as. But hang on a minute, we've got two and a half millimeters of stuff in the middle and people have said, that doesn't matter. Well, I want to show you something. This is an arm off the ZMR 250, the old school quads, right? Three millimeter carbon, right? And it is bloody strong. You could break them, but it was only where the bolts went through. You never break an arm across there because they're just so damn strong. Three millimeter carbon. Well, hang on a minute. You're telling me that taking this amount of strength out of a five millimeter arm, it doesn't matter. I think it does. I think, <laughs> um, yes, most of the strength comes from the outside edges, but a significant amount still comes from that two and a half mils in the middle, as we've seen by the fact that we used to use three millimeter, two and a half, three millimeter arms on quads, and we were quite happy with them. So, yes, this works, but it doesn't work as well as full carbon. I don't think it works as well as full carbon. So, um, what have I done? I've lost the damn quad. Oh, here it is. Uh, so this quad, fantastic in just about every aspect. I'm still just not convinced about the arms, but I will be. I've just mowed a new mini quad track here at the airfield. It took a whole day. I'm old. And uh, so I'm going to thrash the ass off this tomorrow. Oh, if you're American, I'm going to thrash the ass off it. Um, and no doubt that will include a lot of banging into the ground. So we'll know whether these arms are strong. They may be strong enough. I mean, they will not be as strong as full five millimeter carbon, but it may be strong enough. Now I noticed on the Wizard 220 that the foam was a lot thicker in the middle, or the fiberglass in the middle was a lot thicker. So it was stiff, but it wasn't strong. Because you can imagine that if we went to the ultimate extreme here, and I've done this in the past, if we had a material that was like this and like that, and this was all foam in the middle, and we had, let's say we had 0.8, draw an eight millimeters up there, and so we had carbon skins 0.8 millimeters uh, thick, and we had foam in the middle, it would be just as stiff as this, even though we've only got 0.8 millimeters, because carbon doesn't stretch much, right? So what happens is it'll be stiff, but it will break more easily. So it's only stiff up to a point. Stiffness, or the modulus of elasticity, as it's sometimes called, is one aspect, but ultimate strength is the other. And the only thing that gives you ultimate strength is having lots of fibers in the game for the carbon and good resin. So yeah, this will not be as strong as a solid carbon arm. But the question that remains is, is it strong enough? I mean, we're talking about racing. And when you're in racing, you don't want to carry dead weight. You only want to carry as much weight as you need. Anything more than you need. If this is 10% stronger than it needs to be, you've got a weight penalty. So maybe Copus, maybe, maybe Hollybro have engineered this and tried it out and done all the tricks and found that these arms are strong enough. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm saying I will have to try it out and see. So there you go. I hope this answers some of the questions that people have put in respect to these arms. So uh, to summarize, <laughs> I have trouble believing this is carbon foam because it's white. Um, yes, having the, the strength in most of these layups, most of it's in the skins, but still a significant amount remains in the core. Because if it didn't, these two and a half or three millimeter ZMR 250 arms would just bend and break, wouldn't they? This was made of foam, like the core of that arm. Would it be strong enough? No, it wouldn't. So that's where I'll leave that at the moment. That's I'm going to do some field testing. That's what I want to do. Um, and I'll do some more videos. I've told, told this before. I've said this before. I'm going to do some more videos on material science because this sort of stuff's really important to know. You need to know this. And I'm also going to look at the difference in some of the composites because we've been looking at carbon, but fiberglass. Now, why would you 
use, obviously, carbon is stronger and lighter, but it's more expensive. So where does the, the crossover point come when it's feasible to use fiberglass instead of carbon? What about Kevlar? What makes Kevlar so damn clever? Apart from the fact that it's used in bulletproof vests, why would you use Kevlar instead of fiberglass or instead of carbon? Because sometimes you do. And what about the composite Kevlar, fiberglass, carbon twills, where you have a mixture of different composite fibres in the same piece of cloth? What is that all about? And what are the benefits and disadvantages of that? These are things I hope you want to know, because it's really interesting stuff. And if you know this stuff, it enables you to better understand the mechanics and, and when stuff's being used appropriately. So there you go. Um, questions, comments in the usual place. Of course, I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope this has sort of explained a little bit about why I was concerned about those arms. Okay, because you want me to go the extra mile, I've done it for you, I've gone the extra mile. Here we go, what have I got? This is a foam cell material. Now, this is, as you, oh, let's try and keep it in focus. As you can see, it's very flexible, it's, it's, it's stretchy and it's, it's not very strong in traditional sense. But the one thing this does have is, if you look carefully, it's got some little sort of hexagonal shapes of foam. Between the hexagonal shapes is a void where epoxy resin or polyester resin can flow and if you imagine that, looking at the side here, that, that those voids were filled with resins, it would make kind of a honeycomb structure of epoxy resin with a very light foam in the middle, so it would be quite stiff. And that's the centre. This is what's quite commonly used for these um, composites where you have uh, glass or carbon skins with a spacer in the middle. And so what I've done for you, because as I go the extra mile, is I've made this. There you go, that's a piece of foam composite. You see I've got carbon on the top, carbon on the bottom and I've got that foam cell stuff in the middle and you can see hopefully if this camera's focusing can't tell with my without my glasses on you can see that the, the center portion there is just that foam and, and it is it is really really stiff I can't actually bend that, that I can't bend that. I'll just pull out a bit so you can see hopefully a little better um, I cannot bend that material it is so damn stiff it is as stiff virtually as stiff as if it was solid carbon fibre, but I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you it's really stiff and it feels strong, but it's nowhere near as strong as solid carbon fibre. It breaks far more readily. Let's have a look. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this in these vice grips, like so. I'm not going to do it too tight, I just want to hold it, don't want it to crush it. Okay, like so. And on my wonderful bench. Now, if this was solid carbon, there's no way I could break this just by tapping it with a hammer. Let's see if I can do it with the foam. Yeah, look, see, see that broke. That broke quite easily. I didn't require much force at all. And what you'll see has happened here is, it's the strands on the top, the carbon on the top have broken. The carbon is under tension has failed. And on the bottom, the resin has failed. And the bit in the middle, well, it's done bugger all. So when we use the sandwich technique, we have really stiff, really light composites but they are only as strong as the carbon. The bit in the middle adds no strength at all. That was solid carbon. I could never have broken it that easily. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I've got to go do some flying. Try and break this thing. Yeah.